Okay, so what uh, I want to tell you in the next uh, hour, more or less, uh, uh, is uh, what we do here at Polytechnico in a course that is called the Ambient Intelligence, where we try to teach the students uh, the sort of topics, uh, uh, the sort of topics that uh, uh, we discussed in the previous hour uh, this morning. Okay, so this course uh, is called Ambient Intelligence. It's a course of six, six credits that we give on the third year of the bachelor degree and it's a free course so that every uh, kind of engineering student can bring so it's uh, uh, mainly for uh, computer engineering students and electronic engineering students but we, have, we also have other kinds of students but every student can choose this course in their, in their free choices in the third year right and the, um, the course is in English, at least the kind of English that we can speak. Uh, and uh, all if you find it, every information is uh, on, on this website. Uh, so six credits is 60 hours in, the, in our um, uh, learning uh, system. And uh, uh, by the way, before uh, describing what we do in the course, uh, just to tell you that we are somewhat proud, let's say, uh, uh, that we, we could do also not just one yet another course or an additional teaching ma material, but uh, uh, we succeeded in doing some sort of innovation also from the teaching point of view. For example, we, we, we published two papers about the course, about how we do the teaching the, the, in this course. About So this one is the Hydrophobic Transaction on, uh, on uh, Education and is on, is on IT profession magazine from Interpoli so actually uh, the, the, what we are telling is it's probably some it, has, it does have some innovation degree in the, in the teaching domain hmm? okay so if you want the, to look at the papers that explain in more detail what we are doing we have all the links here okay so uh, the goal of the course that we give uh, is uh, uh, to design uh, I will make it short because we already have the background from the previous hour um, to create uh, the system that enriches the experience uh, okay so we want to teach the students how to create an ambient intelligence system but also or more importantly teach the students uh, to adopt a given design methodology uh, in, the, in the first years the students learn uh, to call learn to write application, write, learn some languages, learn, learn some techniques. They never learn how to face a project. So if you tell them, okay, let's do a system for you know, controlling temperature in a room, they will start coding the day after. No? And we try, try to explain them that, okay, it's not the right way. You need first to define the, the requirements and then the characteristics, the features of the system, and then later select the technologies and, and start coding. So you see that students in electronics, the first thing that they do is try to find the sensors. And students from computer science, they try to write some code, which is a result of failure because then the, the, the system will not be complete, will not uh, work if you don't think about it. So I force them to follow a design methodology which is something new for them, okay? Uh, I think it's the most important thing they actually learn from the course. And then I, I push the students to think about integration. So it's not just uh, uh, new technologies, learning a new language. Okay, we also learn a new language, but that's not the main point. It's uh, being able to put together a piece of mobile application, web application, a database, a, a sensor that you build with your own Arduino, another sensor that you buy on the market uh, for smart home sensors and so on. And you need to put them together so that they can work as a single system. So the, the difficulty of uh, system integration rather than component of technology development. And we do this by working in teams. So, the, at the beginning of the course, we split the students uh, in different teams of four people each, and every team should create their own project, individually. Each of them will have a different project with different... Uh, they will use different devices, different technologies, different interfaces for their specific project. Hmm? 
all of them more or less they will use the same general architecture because the architecture of smart system so uh, we, they will build application that will interact with devices and the devices will be in the environment and uh, they need, need to also so especially to take into account users and user interface but this is something that we already know because of the uh, usual stack uh, of the iot so what do we teach actually we teach uh, well, first hour so definition explanation of ambient intelligence in a more long time more or less what we discussed in the first hour I try to explain some design methodology steps. Uh, okay, what does it mean to give a specification? What's a requirement, a functional requirement, a non-functional requirement, the system architecture, the other architecture? So something that we take for granted by students have never learned uh, how, that how to describe things like that. Okay? Separating the description of a system for the user from the system description for the technical people. So if you want to explain what you are doing to your mother. You cannot use uh, technical terms. You need to explain what the system does. But if you try to explain your system to a, a, a fellow student that will help you to implement it, you need to go in technical terms. But the two should be consistent. Mm -hmm. And then some technology, of course. Technology basically for fast prototyping of integrated systems. Actually, we are, we are running on Linux and Python as the glue technologies. Raspberries with Linux and Python programming language, which has a, a billion different libraries for integrating with any possible other devices. So it's much faster, much more compact than Java or JavaScript or other frameworks. For these kind of things, we find uh, in Python you can do uh, web applications, you can control devices with the same ease. Uh, it's the only problem with Python is that you, you cannot create good user interfaces. And only web applications, web interfaces, yes, but desktop or mobile applications, no. So we need to resort to other languages, but that's, that's just a limitation. And, um, okay, and uh, we expose the student to some technology. So this afternoon with Luigi, we will walk to the Ladispe lab, where we can see the actual components, and we, every year we buy something but we try to buy something different every year so to have a very wide choice of technologies i don't want the students uh, to grow up with one technology in mind and say i'm trying to do everything with this i want them to be open and say okay first i need to understand what i need to build and then i will choose the best technologies for my project today maybe tomorrow we'll choose different technologies we, are, we already have too many industries that specialize on a specific technology and try to use that for everything, which is not the optimal choice. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so probably you, you did the course with Aquaviva, yes. In, in that case, uh, you, the, there was a standardization on the technology. No? You, everybody used the same board, the same, or more, yeah, more or less. No? Here we uh, really is the last thing that we that we need. To, uh, every group will choose how, how to develop uh, uh, the, their system and how to integrate uh, with the with the devices. Okay. So actually, we are mix, we are trying to mix in the course some some theory, some background, some a lot of practice, and uh, the knowledge of the technology. So being able to interface with the device you know i know i bought a smartwatch the fitbit okay give me some information how oh, can you read that information and okay we never usually at the beginning of the course there's a lot of things that we that we don't know we teachers we learn together with them we try together with them we find the sources and so on and every project is different hmm? so they they use different devices they need to follow, to solve different problems um, Okay, so actually the goal, the final goal is learning to design, first of all, design methodologies, and to build an AMIA solution, which is working, by the way. <laughs> it's not just something like, oh, you wrote the code, let's run sometimes. No, it's not uh, acceptable. It should be working. And so also being able to put a system together, make it work, make a demonstration, and uh, move it and remake the same demonstration maybe two or three months later so you need to remember what you did and you need to put, be able to put it together again you know? which is the second demo is, is harder than the first one 
because the first one in some way it works and then you, after two months uh, you need to remake the same demo and you, you forgot to, well, what do I need to do I miss my one component this configuration and so on so that's very important um, so it will not be a real product it's a prototype huh? but should be working in the sense uh, okay the the course is uh, highly based on the lab at least 50 percent of the time is in the lab in the programming lab in the lab display where we have both computer for programming and devices electronics uh, uh, power supplies cables breadboard or whatever electronics you need uh, uh, for integrating uh, it's not uh, you, you, for example we cannot do soldering or something uh, more uh, on the component level, because the, the, goal of the course is just integration of existing components. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the lab, uh, in the first part of the course, we give some exercises, traditional exercises, please do this, please do that. Uh, but after half the middle point of the course, uh, all the remaining hours are just three hours in which the students can go and work. And we are there to assist them to help them. Mm -hmm. And so we did a bit. Uh, Of violence to the schedule so don't tell this to my rector or my supervisor because uh, we are doing something which is hmm, not illegal but uh, not planned. so uh, every we have a, um, a schedule a weekly schedule okay this class so much so many hours in the classroom so many hours in the lab and so on and this is supposed to be the same throughout all the semester hmm. we don't like the same we had the 14 weeks of the semester and we have a different number of hours every week so we start in the first weeks uh, with a lot of hours in class because we need to have the basics the technologies to teach the methodology teach the lab, python and so on and some exercises in lab and then as we go you see that the number of hours have, it, it decreases and at the same time the number of uh, time for group work increases so at the end at the beginning we start with four classes every week and the end we only have one class every week so we concentrate the time in class at the beginning the first half of the course so that in the second half the students have time to work on their project and in this time at least one hour one class is uh, supervised by us so they can work in the lab and we can help them solve the problems and the, all the other time is free time for them so in the total we are doing the 60 hours that uh, we are supposed to do but we are doing them in a very skewed way so uh, all the hours in the beginning all the lab at the end and less hours, the average should be three classes per week but we start with four we finish with one so the average is the same but at the end the students are free those that those groups and those students which are more organized they can exploit this, uh, this very much because they have time to work some of them don't realize it or don't you know don't take benefit from this organization and they come at the end uh, and they don't use all the free time that they have here or they use it for some other purposes you know going outside or, or studying other topics hmm? so these are more give more responsibility to the students uh, but uh, at least uh, we can leave time you see that from from here from the middle of the course we don't teach anything new basically nothing new all level is practice yeah it's practice practice support and these two classes are for maybe uh, we identify that uh, you know many projects uh, need to make an android application so we make a class on android for example so on demand topics uh, or labs hmm? okay who are the students so last year i had 30 then more or less we are, we are around 70 80 students the number is not precise because they come and go <laughs> okay they, they come and they disappear and they may be so uh, at least one th more than half or near half are students for computer science informatics and these are electronics and these are mechatronics students so these are the 90 percent of the students then so there are some from aerospace uh, uh, you see these are again electronics uh, electronics, and uh, electronics and communication engineering is the uh, electronics course in english 
electrical engineer, telecommunication engineer, energetics, uh, but these are just single students. Okay. So there's sort of a 50-50 or 60-40 split between computer science and electronic students. One thing that they're really missing are the management students, gestionary. I would really love to have some of them to help with the organization of the project. So not just nurse, but also somebody with a, with a project vision. I think that would be really beneficial, but they don't take this course, they take other courses. They choose. It's free, so. And uh, at the beginning of the course, I make a questionnaire asking them, okay, what, what are you able to do? Oh, by the way, the course is in English, and so a lot of, and it's one of the few courses at the bachelor level in English, and so you have uh, probably 30% of students from abroad. They are from the United States, from. Uh, uh, Yes, from, from Europe, uh, mainly from Latin America, from Spain, from uh, China. China. Yes, yes, five or, five or six students a year from China, something from the Arabian countries, and so uh, it's also good. And so to know them better, a couple of weeks before the course, I send a question. Say, okay, what, what can you do? So uh, this is case from one is nothing and five is a, I'm an expert so they say that more or less they know programming not so much but a bit they know somebody knows a bit about web architectures most of them don't most of them don't know anything about mobile application they never heard about the software requirement specification and they never heard about source control systems and so uh, actually this picture says that they would not be ready to manage the project. Okay, I don't care for the university, but when they go to the, to the industry, this is not a good level of preparation for them. So in this, in this a lot of other, they need a good programming skills, but also a lot of other knowledge. And concerning the programming language, the situation is the same. I put together some programming languages and say, okay, the only one that be, they get a good score are C, because they learned it in the first year. Some C++, a bit of Java, and probably nothing more, and basically, oh, a bit of assembly doing the uh, architecture courses. And basically all the rest, some, some people learn something on their own, by themselves, because we don't teach them. So a lot of uh, languages, that are used in modern system development are not known. You would be crazy in developing a, system, a distributed system in C. Hmm? No, you cannot do that, but actually they don't know that. So, uh, we start from a situation where we try to leverage on the programming skills they have, but not on the specific knowledge. But the results tell us that we can, they can learn these are the results uh, about an analysis after the course, after two years of courses, of how many projects, so how many projects were using, out of 14 projects uh, in that year, were using a given technology. So 58% uh, of people say that they had a, a, no low, a low knowledge of web architectures but in 13 projects out of 14, they actually used that. So during the course, they started from having a low knowledge to actually implement one. And this is the same for other, for example, mobile development, in, nobody knew, knew it, but in half, nearly half of the project, they, they built a mobile application. And uh, source control was used by everybody because it was a requirement uh, for the course. And software requirements also are required for, for the exam, and so everybody needed to specify the work. So, so what it says is that if you push students, if you are demanding of them, they can learn things fast. In one course of six credits, they learn all of this. Of course, they will not be an expert in mobile applications, they will not be experts in web architecture, but they can use it to the level of creating one component by interface for that project. Okay, it can be done. So in many cases we are not ambitious, ambitious enough in our courses because we teach one technology and say, okay, but then let's not push too much. Well, I have an advantage in this course 
that the course is, uh, is, not, um, is optional, is elective. So they choose it. So if they find it too difficult, uh, they just, uh, they can leave. Okay, I don't care. Okay, they can choose something next, uh, something different next year. If it was a, a compulsory course, it would be more difficult to push the students more. But I think we can do much more. They can learn uh, a lot. Hmm? And the same for the programming languages. A lot of programming languages were not known at the beginning, and many of them were actually used in the project. Of course, they work in a team of four. So maybe one student will specialize in one part, another student will specialize in another part, but it's how work goes. So in every day's work, we always do that. Okay, so you are more good, you are better at the database level, you are better at the graphical level, okay, let's split the work. Oh, I, I want them to learn and to create things by working together. And, uh, okay, how do we help them? Uh, there's the material on the, on the website. We have all the slides, uh, the ex exercise, and so on. And uh, all the classes are recorded, and they, we put them on, on YouTube. And uh, we have a Facebook group for, for sharing information. Uh, we have uh, some Google Drive documents that we use to define the projects, the groups, and so on. And most of all, we have uh, a repository from GitHub. And every group uh, will have two repositories on GitHub. One uh, is for creating their own website for presenting the project, and the other for hosting the course, the development, the application, and so on. Yeah. And uh, they need to use that. So they will not give anything on paper. They need everything. They need to upload it on GitHub and we'll review it uh, and, uh, during the process of the course. So we try also to use uh, modern technologies to, for collaboration. One thing I noticed is that during the last years, the strange, but the, the number of students that is actively using Facebook is lower. Yes. Why? They, I don't know. They don't. They don't read. The, you, you put a message on Facebook. They don't. They don't read. Okay. But didn't you see? I wrote a message. Ah no, I don't use Facebook. I, oh. uh, so we need to find something else <laughs> to engage the students in their communication. Maybe huh? Maybe LinkedIn? Oh no, no. They, I think that they don't know uh, what it is yet. We are, uh, we are not thinking. Uh, they, s they discover LinkedIn after they graduate, usually. Mm -hmm. um, when, they start, when they start searching for work. I don't know. I, we, need, uh, we need to check this because we created a group because it was four, five, four or five years ago. Uh, it was a good way of getting in touch with everybody instead of sending emails. And now, I don't know. But, uh, we need to study that. Okay, and uh, um, okay. So how we do the exam at the end? At the exam, we we need to we want to check whether they understood the, the process and whether they could actually implement the system. So um, actually. We, the exam is composed of, of two parts. One is the documents uploaded during the course online. So I show you the workflow of the different uh, deadlines, intermediate deadlines. And at the, the, the exam of the day, we will check the document that they sent throughout the course. And 50% of the score is coming from what is online. So the system specification, uh, uh, system requirements, uh, system architecture, and so on, described on the website, uh, plus presentation video. And 50% of the score is uh, on the exam date. So on the exam date, they need to uh, make a presentation, a demo, and a discussion with us. So a presentation with slides, in 10 minutes to, to, to uh, explain the project, a demo of the real system working in, in the LADISP lab, and then discussion, we ask questions, uh, uh, mainly to, to, to understand what they did or to understand better. So it's an exam of nearly 30, 30, 40 minutes uh, per group. And the, the, the score is obtained by putting together these two parts, the documentation and the presentation of, of, the, of, the, of the project. So how do we work in developing this, uh, this project? So we start, uh, this is the first uh, lecture of the course, this is what, uh, what we did last year, so with the real dates. Okay, we say, okay, this year, every year we define a new topic. 
So in the first day, we define the topic of the course. Say, okay, you need to think about, to propose a project of ambient intelligence about this topic. This year, the topic was uh, sustainability. Last year was uh, health and well-being. The year before was the smart university. Next year, I cannot tell you. Yeah, uh, because it's a secret. And so on. So we define a topic, and, and the students should submit an initial idea. Say, OK, we are a group of these three or four people, and we would like to present a project for doing this. It's on their own to come up with ideas. We give some examples and suggestions, but basically they, and we, we spend the first month in refining the idea. So they first give us a submit an idea, and submit it means they write it on Google Doc, and we review them, we make comments, and uh, on another date, uh, so the 26 to the 23, a couple of weeks uh, for creating the groups uh, and proposing ideas, we discuss uh, these ideas in class. Okay, we say, okay, uh, we have, uh, we saw the ideas, this is good, this is not good, this is accessible, this is missing, this can be improved, uh, this should be thrown away and so on. Hmm? So uh, the, the blue part are the parts that involve uh, uh, teachers and the red parts are the parts that involve the students. So after the 23, or after this, this step, uh, we have uh, nearly 50% of the groups uh, that are good, performed with a good number of people and with a good idea. So they can start developing the idea. The other 50% need more time, need more feedback, need to come up with better ideas, better ideas, improve them and so on. And we will go that in parallel. And uh, so at that point, uh, with the groups that are good, uh, we create the GitHub repositories, and so they can start actually to work. So this, the first month, uh, and uh, they must create the initial website for preparing the project and uh, describe a vision of the, so one page, let's say, a sort of a landing page where they describe the idea behind the, that project. And the difficult part for them is to write half a page describing the project without using technology terms. I will not accept that if they write like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever. Okay, they, they need to describe the vision of the system from the point of view of the user without speaking about technology. They want to be sure they think about what the system does. It's very difficult for them. And uh, so they submit it by creating on GitHub, the visi which is visible to everybody, public. And then, on the next day, or two days after, we, we give a feedback. So what, do, what we do actually is to review all the website that they created, make comments, and then in the next lab, we have a lab section, in which we go group by group by commenting what they did wrong. And then they should correct that. Uh, we, don't we won't check it anymore. We will check at the exam whether it's, it's good. But throughout, uh, at every step, uh, we give them feedback. Huh? So it's not, we, we are not giving scores or points or, or whatever. We are just saying, okay, you did this, I think it could be, this is wrong and this could be improved. Then do as you wish. At the exam, I will read it again. And if it's better, of course, you will get a, a better score. Okay? And people who don't do this in time, we just don't read it. We don't give feedback. We don't care, actually. No? Because in this kind of process, it's always difficult to keep, uh, um, well, to handle the groups uh, that work with different speeds. Somebody is always late, so, but we would, we would get, it would be impossible to follow everybody if, they, if the deadlines are not uh, crisp. So they also need to learn what the deadline is. And then, uh, you know, April, beginning of April, beginning of May. So one month for developing the requirements. A list of the, of the requirements, functional and non-functional requirements, of what the system needs to do. So starting from the vision, up a page, to the requirement document, which is probably three, three or four pages, no, no more than that. But they need to break down the functionality of the system into small pieces that need to be you know, implemented separately. And again, we explain them what requirements they are, we give examples and so on. We ask them to publish them on website and give, we, we give feedback on this, we call deliverable number two. And then, uh, again, about the system architecture. 
And here we are uh, again strong say, okay, at this level, you just need to say what the system does. Only at the architectural level, you can start thinking about how the system is composed. Because until you know the full set of requirements, you are not able, or you should not think about the components of the system. Right? And so again, it's very difficult to, 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 to break them and say, okay, let's stop. Let's not think about this right now, because you first need to, to, to decide whether this functionality is useful or not. And then once you have the functionality, then you can decide that you need this component. But yeah, until you have the full list of functionalities, it's useless. And this is a deliberate option. At this point, so the architecture. So vision, requirements, architectures are the three main steps. And each of them is deliverable to submit on GitHub. At this point, uh, we organize a public event. So I invite some companies that are more like friends uh, to come and uh, listen to the students' presentation. So I, every group has five minutes to present their project to a panel of people from uh, different enterprises. And these people from the enterprises just uh, fill a questionnaire about uh, their impression on the project. So the idea is that at this point, the project is defined. Everything is clear about what needs to be done. Probably zero lines of code have been written. Or maybe they, they will start to do something, for sure. But actually, at this point, we know what to do. We have the feedback from the teachers, one, two, three, and we have the feedback from the companies, from some industrial friends or stakeholders. And so that can be used for improving the project. At this point, we, we are at the middle of the course, which we, we, the event closes the uh, specification phase, the design specification phase, and then we start the implementation. And uh, so, in the next month, uh, May to June, they have all the time for working. So no more classes, no more labs, and so on. So all the time for work, for the, the projects, uh, always. Uh, and uh, <laughs> sooner or later, we'll come to present the project to the exam. Okay? And at the exam, we will evaluate the one, the two, the three, plus the presentation they do. And this closes, let's say, the, the official part. We give a score, we thank them, and so on. The next step would be, and you started to, 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 to organize that in the first edition of the course. After some time, I organize, uh, so the exam usually is, is in this period. I had one yesterday, okay, in June. And some, somebody will come in September. Uh, in October, I organize a public showcase where it's, uh, it's in conjunction with the local incubator here of enterprises and we go there and the students will uh, make a, a stand each for each group uh, with a demo on the table with a poster and we'll be there to explain the project to other people usually we have uh, 20 people more or less attending the showcase so it's a good number many of them are future students, but many of them are also from, from, from industries that come and see and want to talk to the students. Uh, there are prizes, so we have sponsors that give some prize and nice prizes and uh, gadgets for the best groups. Uh, and there is a voting system based on, on tokens, on paper tokens that you need to give to put into the... So it's, it's, also, it's also fun, but it's also challenging because they, they know that since the first edition, uh, they know that there are good prizes to win. You know? Uh, they were, uh, you know, they were, we had a, a GoPro, a professional, uh, we had a, an, an Apple TV, we had devices like that. So something that uh, usually are uh, electronic gadget that cost uh, several hundred euros. Industries so. sponsoring such kind of things. Industries, yes. Industries yes. yes, we have, uh, last year we had five different sponsors. Three of them sponsored the, the, the gadgets, the prices, uh, one for the catering and another for the t-shirts and stuff like that. So yes, they come, they, they put their logo and so on and they, 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 they buy the prices. Yes. And the, the, the sponsor industry actually what they can do is to talk in a private session with the students. Because in tw with 200 people around it's very difficult not to. So the sponsor one hour for them 
and because they see that as a recruiting opportunity so good people that are being filtered because they are good students because they have the results and so they want to talk to them and take contacts and yes and at the end we are all really exhausted because uh, in one co one course of six credits we probably the, the, the work of one full year for everybody students and teachers no? but it's very really it's very rewarding but at the end uh, uh, what the, the students say is that this is the one of the course that they hated most uh, and they loved most at the same time because they really had to work very hard but at the end they learned uh, probably more than uh, Okay, so that's uh, that's a spe particular experience. Uh, we are very okay. There's a details about the exam, but uh. so um, can I show you some examples about the project that they did? Uh, so in general, most of the projects we this picture we made this picture after analyzing three years of projects and trying to see the, the, the recurring points that are in many, many projects. And so we say for the type of project that we make, uh, there, is, uh, oh, there are, of course, uh, usually some sensors and some actuators for interfacing with the field. Uh, we have an end user that is surrounded by a sensor and is aware of what the actuators are doing, and the end user interacts with some end user application. That may be mobile, it can be of uh, uh, different types. And then we have, uh, in some cases, you know, the reasoning part, which is onto a smartphone or onto an embedded system, usually you use Raspberry to implement some algorithm for doing the reasoning part. And in many cases, we also have some cloud backends. So we integrate with Google Calendar, integrate with Facebook, integrate with some other services weather forecasting services whatever um, and on the back end level some of these some back ends can be third party cloud services some back ends are implemented by them so we have the distributed application where maybe there are more computer on the field and there are more powerful one for storing data and doing computation so, so they have these four main sensors actuators reasoning part and user interfaces uh, the integration technology with this time is uh, HTTP REST uh, communication messages, so today's standard. Uh, usually for uh, implementing uh, both the embedded system and the application server, we, we try to use uh, Python when possible uh, for the smartphone application and, and, web, uh, and web technologies. For the smartphones, of course, they need, uh, if they want to program in Android, they need to, to use Java because that's the only way. But so, all the projects more or less follow this general architecture. Some probably are more here, more there, more there, because it depends on, on the needs of each project. And uh, if you want to have a look at the project, they are all on the web. So these are the links uh, to the websites. Uh, for example, this is the last one. For this year's projects, uh, this is the, the catalog of the project. If, if you click on one project, you will see the websites created by the students of this project. So all these websites are different, have been created by students. Uh, they all contain more or less the same information that correspond to the vision requirements and architecture, plus a presentation video. Yeah, and it's open uh, the one uh, with the healthcare. This is the last one. Is one? Uh, no, uh, sorry. Which one? Uh, no, no, the, the, the best one. This one? No. Project. Uh, from the first page. From the first page, the Projects here. No. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, from the slides here. Yes, yes. Uh, health and. That's what would be. Okay. Last year project. So we had uh, sixteen or seventeen projects. Uh, this. Uh, the baby will sleep more peacefully and uh, breath in troubles for anxious people when you have an anxiety attack. Uh, okay, garden health of your plants. Uh, um, Alzheimer people, helping Alzheimer people in their home. 
avoiding that you start for too long at your screen, so uh, helping you blink uh, frequently, uh, handling uh, allergies in the air. Uh, this uh, is an, an interactive gym, but this project didn't go well. This uh, is a bus stop for uh, blind people. Uh, this is people with somnambulism. keeping your dog healthy, making it move, feeding him, etc. This is something for detecting your psychological states, emotional states, and so on. It's a bit strange. Uh, this is for um, relaxing pregnant women when they have some uh, issue. So there are corners where they can go and sit and relax and so on. Uh, the, uh, a, a, a schedule for going to bed, so they prepare the, the lights, the sounds, and so on, so they feel a little better. And this one, these are these two are similar. This uh, actually I never understood what they did. Uh, this uh, is interesting because it's uh, something for sitting correct in the correct position. So when you're sitting, studying, uh, this was not terminated. It was a good idea of keeping you awake while driving, but uh, the group. Uh, Split and this is something that monitors your sun exposure and uh, in order to avoid you getting too much uh, ultraviolet uh, light. So, so these are how uh, many of them? 15, 16, 3, 6, 9, 12, 16, 15, so 18 projects. Not all of them were completed, so these were the 18 that started. Some of them completed, so that students passed the exam, some others just abandoned. Normal, and uh, and a subset of them were presented the showcase because not everybody is there. I have a lot of international students. They can they will go back to their home, so they will cannot be here in October and present the project. And uh, for example, these are the projects in 2016, the one that we saw. So every project had to create one uh, one stand in the, in the showcase, present, prepare one poster and uh, explain the post to the students. And so the winner projects in the last edition of the course, 2016, were these three, Tati Mam and Alex Sakest and Study Station. i show you more details. So Safety Mama is a project uh, for relaxing pregnant women. Now, so uh, pregnant women may have issues about uh, heart rate, about uh, high um, blood pressure and so on, that could impact the, the health of the child. And so there are some sensors based mainly on health rate and bracelet for checking the condition of the woman. And if the condition you know, may become critical or concerning, and then the woman will say the notification, do you want to start a relaxing section? And uh, she, she said yes, or so uh, she, she sat in a corner where there were some lights, uh, there were softer, there was some good music. Uh, and there was some some uh, odor, some aromas that they were uh, uh, you know, uh, spread into the air, and so they, they they took this information from medical papers saying, okay, what are the conditions they make? What will help to relax? Yeah, yeah. how to help to, to relax? Uh, the, and so in this way, so this session, and there was a mobile application for starting and stopping the station and so on. And you see that. There's a Raspberry, there are uh, speakers connected to Raspberry, you have the mo an Android application, you have a, a Philips Hue lamp, and uh, a smart plug with the wave protocol that we use to, uh, uh, to, to send, the, to power the, the, the perfume uh, spray uh, component. So it's something that is bought at the supermarket and there is plugged in a smart plug and they are controlling the smart plug. So they are integrating different kinds of stuff into the system. Hmm? Strange, but uh, it, it was uh, one of the three winners. The second winner was this emergency cast. Is uh, I'm sorry, I don't have many more pictures about this. Um, elderly people or people who have Alzheimer at home uh, will be warned when they uh, approach uh, dangerous situations. So, if there is a sensor that says that they go towards the kitchen. A voice will play, be careful with the fire and so on. If they, uh, there are three use cases. Um, avoid the situation, 
rela ah, there's a relaxing process also because those people can there are some moments in which they, they realize they, they forgot something so they become angry and they become nervous so again there's a the sounds and lights that are help them to relax and then a voice that guide them to uh, don't worry, be quiet and so on. There's some protocol say that it's supposed to relax the people. And again there's a present sensor that detects when the person is outside home, it will alert uh, one, uh, one, one relative, one uh, the, 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 you know, the, the son of the person or whatever. Uh, and they used uh, a commercial hub from a company called Alite, Alite uh, that this hub will control different lamps this is a U, again a U lamp there were uh, there were sensors and so on so they use this uh, gateway then they created a web interface a mobile interface for the song and so on and again the corner you see the raspberry <laughs> because usually you use that as a platform study station is a more hardware oriented project uh, this guy has a uh, suit in his uh, t-shirt, uh, two sensors that were basically acceleration sensors. So they, they learn the tilt of the, of the, of the two shoulders, actually, uh, whether, and they understand whether you are sitting in the right position or you are bending on one side or bending too much in the front. And by comparing uh, this uh, waveform of the front sensor, they will give you uh, a warning, a vibration actually, saying, okay, try to, try to strike now. Huh? Um, so this, uh, I, I also saw some startup doing this. So this put it together, this, but you see that in every component there's always a sensing component, a system that is con constantly monitoring what they are doing, and if the system detects some condition, then some action will start immediately by the system. Hmm? So that we close the loop. Uh, the year before, uh, since we have still some five minutes, uh, uh, this is a, this is a 2015 project. The topic was uh, um, was uh, smart campus, and in that year at the showcase we had also you saw that at the beginning. In 2016, we had uh, 18 projects at the beginning, and then at the showcase, we had uh, 4, 8, and 3, 11. Only 11 of them made it to the end, okay? In, uh, to, in the year before, again, there were 11 projects at the end. We had a small number starting, but... Uh, and uh, again, the three winners are these, these three. Marco Poli, well cleaned, and my by place. Marco Poli is a... Uh, an application for finding your way inside uh, the campus. So it's an indoor navigation uh, application plus uh, detection of, uh, uh, of issues in the, you know, in the campus where you have an exam, so there will be 200 people waiting out of the door and so it will be very difficult to cross this corridor. So they, they, they have uh, noise sensors in different places that will tell you Please don't go there because there's already too much uh, uh, crowded. No? So if you want to plan your your um, so uh, they will give you a map where you can find your way inside the campus, and the map will tell you places to avoid and also places to go. So they say maybe tomorrow in the library there will be an event, or the bar uh, will make a special offer, or whatever, or maybe there's an interesting conference in some classroom. So there will be red places to avoid and uh, green places to attract you, to, to inform you of events. Huh? This uh, is what I did. So it monitors your uh, location, it monitors the environment and puts them together and it, it's also a, a way of promoting events in the, in the campus. This was the winner, the first place. The second is it's called Well Cleaned, is actually a, a sensorized bathroom. So in the bathroom of the campus, and the topic was the smart campus today, uh, they were monitoring the level of trash in the bin, the level of soap in the soap container, and the level of uh, paper in the toilet paper uh, roll. Okay? So whenever the trash bin was too high, or the soap or toilet paper were too low, uh, they would send a notification. Uh, they, they did two, two things. One is to inform the users. 
So the users are as an application where they see in real time the, 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 the status of the different buttons. So don't go there because it's cloudy, well, you won't find soap and so on. Uh, and at the same time, they will send a warning to the people doing maintenance, the cleaning, the same. Please go there and leave it there. No? So, uh, again, he's informing the user before it goes there. And the third project was my bike place. It was a very simple project. It's so a sort of a stall for parking your bike here. So this is a bike uh, uh, wheel. Uh, when you park the bike there, there's a sensor that says this better and with a RFID uh, identifier, it will match your bike and it will remember that your bike is there. And we associate that place with your smartphone. So, two features. One is at the end of the day, when you go and pick your bike back, it will tell you where you parked it. Because in many cases, you forget the where was the other. And second, if someone else is trying to pick it, it will inform you because it will uh, understand that you are lifting the bike, lifting the sensor without uh, you being present there without unlocking. So you're sort of a security problem. Sorry? Security problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a small, it's a good. Well, point is that there is not a real security because if I put a stone here or a weight here and I leave the bike, the system will not know. But okay, it's not, as I said, it's not it's, they're not final problems. Right? They're just prototypes that show the building of a complete system uh, in this case. So these were the sixth projects, they were the winners in the, in the, the last two years. Uh, this afternoon, Luigi will tell you something about some of the projects of this year. We don't know the winners yet because the showcase will be in October, but uh, we will show some, some videos. If you want, uh, from these websites uh, uh, that I mentioned before, they are public, so you can go there. Uh, each of the projects uh, has one video published, uh, so that they can also show in, in, a, in a couple of minutes uh, what the system can do. So this is actually what we try, what we were trying to do. Uh, these are some pictures from okay from the from the showcase. Um, what do the students say? You know, the last, the, so uh, after all this, uh, the, the, after the course, the students fill the questionnaires, and uh, we, we read what they said. So many say, okay, the course is very demanding. Yes, I know. Huh? By it's, it's by design. <laughs> um, I learn more than in all other courses. Good. It's the type of course I ever saw. I, I, I didn't write it. Um, it's too heavy. Yes. Uh, I should have twice as many hours. Uh, yes, because there are a lot of uh, activities to do and a lot of things to learn. It's difficult to get good lab assistance. This is an issue because actually you have 18 groups uh, working in a lab with one or two teachers assisting them. So if they have a particularly complex uh, issue, it's difficult to have time for everybody. You know? uh, we, we would need more lab assistants, but we don't have them. Uh, it's difficult to work in groups. Huh? Go. They discovered that. That's important because it's, all, it's always difficult to work in groups, even in the workplace, not just in school. Well, there was some work that we cannot repeat in public. So uh, There was one comment, uh, it's not written here, that came up only this year, in the last questionnaire, mainly for you. And a couple of students say this is not a, a computer engineering course. Probably they were thinking this, there is too much project management. And say we are not programming enough, probably. So I think this is an aspect I have to work on to, to make it clear, to try to understand what they meant. <laughs> uh, because they. Actually, they are implementing a lot, but probably there are a lot of, a lot of electronics and a lot of uh, project management. So maybe they feel that the writing code is not 90% of the time. But it's a reality, actually. It's, uh, yeah. But in fact, the problem is uh, uh, whether they realize that in, in every real project, uh, writing code is never 90% of the time, especially for an engineer. If you're a programmer with less skills, then maybe they, they are coder full time. But here, the design part is more important for engineers than the actual coding part. 
design, system design, architecture design, so, so it's something that I need to discuss with them. But usually at the showcase, you know, when it's more relaxed, we are there all the day long, mounting stuff, uh, it's a good place to, to, to discuss with the students, chat with them, also understand them more deeply what, uh, what they mean with their features. Okay, so that's, uh, that's all about uh, what we are doing here. And uh, in the afternoon, we will uh, show you one example of a project, like put it together. Right now, I only gave a very you know, general view about the technologies. We will show you in detail, more in detail, but uh, actually how things fit together, and then we go to visit the display and see how the, what are the devices, how the students are working, and where the, where the lab is. So uh, it will be at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Very good. Thank you.